Hi everybody and welcome to another Gaffer and Gear. And today we have an episode by request, in fact by popular request. This is the most requested topic I get asked to do a video on. And I think it's going to surprise a lot of people that uh, the topic is how do I store and manage the lamp stock that I keep in my vehicles? Uh, so look, we'll go just quickly back in time. Uh, back when I started in lighting, and that was when we used to get two sticks and rub the two sticks together, together to create light and fire. Back in those days, when you um, got a HMI lamp, uh, the HMI lamp came in a cardboard box, much as it does now, but instead of it having all of this environmental um, environmentally friendly packaging inside it, which doesn't last. Um, it used to come with uh, a pre-cut foam insert that the, the uh, globe uh, fitted snug into, or the, the lamp fitted into. And it was this sort of stuff. And this is actually from uh, some of my other lamp boxes. So, you know, lamps actually did come wrapped in this. So the reason I'm pointing that out is, uh, one thing I, I get asked by a lot of uh, younger gaffers is, if you store um, the lamps in a, a material like this, Will it scratch against the glass and, and damage the glass and could it explode? Well, the answer to that is they used to pack it in this stuff before environmental, environmentally friendly packaging came along. So this is what it was in all the time. Uh, now, in terms of um, lamp stock, I don't have that much lamp stock anymore in my vans because LED is pretty much replacing everything. But we'll start off, we'll have a look at um, this case here, which is my lamp stock for my 2.5 4K HMI PARs. Now I keep those heads lamped at two and a half K when they're in the vehicles. And the reason I do that is because I live in a high voltage country and we can actually run a 2.5 K off house power. So just to be certain that we're not gonna accidentally run a 4 K off house power, which could be a recipe for disaster, I keep those heads lamped at two and a half K when they're in the vehicles. So in those lamp heads, there are two 2.5 Ks and I have a spare 2.5 K lamp in this case. I also have three 4K lamps in this case for those lights. So I've got the two running stock for one for each lamp head plus a spare. Now, when it comes to um, uh, your cases, what I use is um, quite cheap uh, pick apart foam cases. So pick apart or pluck foam cases, they're, they're pre-cut and all you do is push in the sections that, um, that you want to make your shape for the globes. Now the next thing is you don't need to go out and buy really expensive brand name cases because these things aren't going to get used that much. You know, they literally sit in your vehicle and they only come out when you need to change a lamp. So you know, you're not going to be pulling them out every single job. Uh, you don't have to have a, a case that's waterproof, you're not going scuba diving with it. So you don't have to buy a super expensive case. Now I'll just go through what I keep in here apart from just the lamps. So I have a set of gloves. So in case you don't know, the reason we have gloves is you shouldn't be touching the glass. Now when these are operating, the quartz glass on these gets hotter than 500 degrees Celsius. Now at those extreme temperatures, the grease from your fingerprint will burn through the quartz glass. So what happens is you start to get a welt on the glass and that can eventually lead to an explosion. Now, so that's why we've got the gloves, is so that you make sure you don't touch the glass when you're, when you're putting it in. Now, here's the thing, it's not just enough to, um, to wear gloves, because the problem with that is we're assuming that nobody else has touched the glass. Or what if you accidentally touch the glass? Well, you need something to clean it with. Okay, so I also keep uh, isopropanol wipes. So uh, I get my isopropanol wipes from the chemist. You can get packets of 200. Now, if you buy them in bulk, it works out to about 15 cents um, a, a wipe. So for 15 cents, you've got the added security that um, your, uh, your $400 globe doesn't have a fingerprint on it. Now, um, the next thing uh, it, that is worth mentioning. Okay, so storing them like this not only protects them better than having them in the cardboard box, but it also takes up less space. Okay, so I've got four globes in the space of two of these boxes. But here's the thing, don't chuck your old cardboard boxes out. You wanna keep these and keep uh, all of the paperwork and all of the inserts. So here's why. Let's say this is a brand new globe um, and, and it craps out after 50 hours. It's got a defect in it. Now, you can't get a warranty return on it without the original box. So I've 
falling into the I've fallen into this trap. So you want to keep the original box somewhere until the warranty is up because you might need this for a warranty return. Now here's where some globe manufacturers can be increasingly difficult. Some globes have serial numbers on them. And if the serial number on the globe doesn't match the serial number on the box, they won't give you a refund. So I've had that happen to me as well. Now with the HMI lamp stock, I have found it to be so robust that I only need to keep a one to two ratio with my spare globes. So what I mean by that is for every two HMIs I have that use the same lamp, I have one spare. Now I just wanna clarify something with that. That's if you avoid doing hot restrikes. So prior to, um, prior to avoiding doing hot restrikes, um, I needed a few more spares than that. But once I avoided doing hot restrikes, once I found that that was the key, um, the stock is extremely robust. It is very, very unlikely that you're gonna have an issue with a HMI globe, but you should have a spare. It's, I equate it to having a spare tire on your car. You might not need it for two years, but when you need it, you're grateful that you've got it. Now, um, in terms of restriking the lights, what I found is with um, 400s, 575s, uh, 800 watts, 1.2s, 1.8s, and 2.5s, uh, wait a couple of minutes and you won't have a problem. Now, with 4Ks, and 4K is the biggest HMI that I have, with 4Ks, I now wait six minutes before I do a hot restrike, because I found those to be extremely problematic with hot restrikes. But all my other lamps, I'll wait a minimum two minutes. And I've gotten to the stage now where um, I actually set a timer on my phone. So I turn the light off, set the timer, uh, and I'll have an alarm go off in two minutes. But I don't necessarily start the light straight away. I'll have a look around the set, and if camera department look like they're still two minutes away, from getting set up, I will wait an additional minute or so before I fire up the lamp just to be sure. And if you do that, then you don't need to carry as much spare lamp stock with you. Now here's the thing, I have one spare globe per two lights in the globe kit, in the, in the lamp kit, in the van. But I also have additional spare lamps here in the workshop. And here's why, let's say uh, I blow a lamp, something goes wrong, I have a faulty lamp and I use my spare, okay? And I've got a shoot tomorrow, okay? Now I don't just rock up to the shoot tomorrow without a spare and cross my fingers and hope that nothing goes wrong. I have a spare in the workshop that I then put into the kit and I can go out on set tomorrow. I'm okay, I've got a spare globe. Now what if you've got a lot of globe stock to keep track of in your vehicles? Um, it can be quite difficult. Well. Here's what I used to do back in the day when I had lots of lights that used lamps. So uh, just to paint some picture of it, uh, I've got two lighting vans, okay? So I had to keep track of the lamp stock in those, as well as keeping track of lamp stock in rentals. So here's what I used to do. And I say used to. So this is um, the old lamp, uh, spare lamp kit from my large lighting van. So this is from three years ago. And I used to have about Oh, it would have been somewhere between 50 to 60 lamp heads that used globes back in those days in, in that one van, okay? So what I had in this kit was 32 um, spare lamps. So this was uh, everything below a 2.5K HMI. So every single hole in here uh, was a lamp or was a globe, okay? So if we were working on set and uh, uh, we blew a globe. For example, I might not even be on the set. One of my guys might be on the set for me, okay? And he blows a globe, okay? So what he does is he pulls the kit out, takes a globe out, puts that in the lamp, puts that in, in, the, in the light, and that leaves an empty slot, okay? And then the guys, all they did was, when they dropped the van back here, or when I came back with the van, they'd have this on the front seat, okay, on the passenger seat. So when I got the van back, I'd open it up, have a look on the passenger seat. If the globe box was on the passenger seat, I knew that this thing needed restocking. So I just open it up, have a look at what slots are empty, and then refill the slots. Okay, so I'd have um, loads of spare globes. I had two drawers uh, here full of globes back when we used to use a lot of globes. So I'd just find a globe that's missing, put it in the slot. Simple as that, restock it, and then I would make sure as hell I put this back in the van straight away. Okay, doesn't matter if my phone rings, doesn't matter if the dog sounds like it's dying, this goes straight back into the van, because if I forget to put this in the van, 
Then we've got no spare globes. That's the only downside to doing this system. But it was a really simple system to keep track of. All I had to do was make sure there were no holes. And there we go, we had all the spare globes. Hopefully that's uh, helped you out. Um, I'm Andrew Locke, see you on the next episode of Gaffer and Gear.